What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Jared Lucas Show. This is episode number six. He's Jared Lucas. I'm Alex Margulies. Our program uh, brought to you by Key Acura of Reno, Wolfpack Moving, and Bradley Drendel and Janine. Our special guest this week is going to be Nick Davidson. Yep. What a game for Nick this week. Oh, great game for Nick, and I think the past couple games, he's done a great job stepping up for us. His ability to shoot the three and then back-to-back double-doubles, and then I don't know how many double-doubles he has in league play. It might be three, uh, but, I mean, he's played tremendous for us, and stepping up and being a – a score, rebounder, do everything type of guy. So great for him. All right, some cool backstory with him as well. If you don't know this, uh, both of his parents are Wolfpack alums. Uh, even got some pictures of of uh, Nick at a, a Wolfpack football game uh, when he was like eight years old. So we'll get his thoughts on that. Uh, but let's get to it with what happened on Tuesday night. So this was obviously a, a big opportunity for your team, Jared, to go into Logan, a quad one opportunity, a ranked team on the road, uh, and you guys really uh, played one of your best games of the season, 77-63, to 63, uh, to beat the Aggies. That is never an easy place uh, to go win. Even some of the best Wolfpack teams we've seen here in the last decade have lost in Logan. Uh, what do you think it took to be able to get the wind out there? Well, I want to say Logan probably is the toughest place, to, in my opinion, is the toughest place to play in the Mountain West, their student section being so loud, and they're literally right on top of you, mm-hmm. sideline, and then right here, right on the court. But a great job for us and the guys to be able to get the job done. And I think Nick was a big key to us being able to get the job done. Nick scored at all three levels, shooting the three, getting to the basket, and then defending uh, great Ozibor, uh who potentially could be the Mountain West Player of the Year. And our, our young guy, I like to say he's young, but he's not. Uh, Nick, a sophomore, uh, did a tremendous job slowing him down. Uh, I think he only 11 points on the night, and then Nick goes for uh, 25 and 10, whatever his numbers were. But Nick played tremendous. I, once again, I think he played a big part. And then. Trey Coleman, uh, I think he did a really good job on Ian Martinez, who's a great player they have as well. You know, it just seemed to me a big part of that game plan. Obviously, Nick performed to it, but a big part of the game plan, it seemed like, was you guys were going to feed Nick the the basketball. And and maybe, to me, it was like the most concerted effort this season to consistently get him the ball. Uh, Was that something you guys talked about, wanting to make sure that he was going to get shots because of the opportunities and looks that he was getting? Yeah, well, we knew that Great Osborne was a really good player, so we wanted to make him play at both ends, uh, which he, he's, he was capable of playing at both ends. But Nick did a good job putting pressure on him on the defensive end with Nick, getting Nick consistent touches throughout the game. Nick finished, and then a lot of times, I think three or four times in the game, we ran a pick and roll with me and Nick. And I knew coming off those screens, I think all three times, well, the way that they were guarding me, hard hedging, they're giving Nick a wide open look from three, and I think Nick hit two of those. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, great job by him. But once again, we kind of wanted to attack Osborne on both both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively. And then it kind of goes to show he had four fouls in the game uh, and kind of got him in foul trouble most of the game as well. When Nick is able to hit threes, which he's been able to do the last couple of games, and his percentage now is, has risen up to 30%, uh, and Trey Coleman is hitting threes. When those two guys are able to stretch the defense and be able to hit shots from the outside, those two guys, what does it do for you and Keenan? in terms of your opportunities and the way that maybe the defense has to account for them, then it gives you guys a different chance to score. Well, it created this opportunity for the space to floor. Both me and Keenan, I think, have, you know, probably the focal points offensively uh, to try to slow us down. But then when you open the floor, like a lot of teams, especially Utah State, uh, they did a good job on me the other night, but they tried to slow me down, but they also tried to slow Keenan. But when you try to do that, you open up opportunities for Trey Coleman. And one other game we look back for Trey is Trey, despite we lost, I think Trey had 25 mm-hmm. uh, against Wyoming. Yep. And then Utah State tried to do something similar, right, trying to slow down both Key and I. But Nick steps up and has a tremendous game. Trey Coleman did great on both ends of the floor. Yep. Uh, so once again, those guys step up. They're great players. Uh, and we knew that their time was going to come. And uh, what a game that it was for them, and especially for uh, Nick to step up in that moment. All right, let's talk specifically about your defense. That was one of your best defensive performances. Uh, what was your biggest takeaway and just the way that you guys were collectively able to defend? You mentioned Great Osibor. He is one of the bigger challenges in, ter- in terms of interior. Um, but just the way your, your team defense was in the game to limit uh, the Aggies, who are one of the most efficient offensive teams, you, know, you held them under 40% shooting. Well, we knew that they were a good team on all three levels, scoring the ball, getting to the basket. They had a good big fella inside. So we wanted to once again, kind of communicate. We knew that it was going to be hard um, going to Utah State and communicating, but you need all five guys to be connected. And that was an emphasis that we had. Uh, Keenan kind of said it earlier in the week, uh, all of us being connected. And I think we did a really good job with our game plan. We knew anytime Osborne got the ball inside, we wanted to send a double, and we did a really good job. There were certain guys we kind of wanted to, you know, we'll give up the opportunity to some other players on the floor, but we knew that we, once Osborne got the ball, we were going in there to double, and I think our rotations were great. I think that might have been the key to the game, our rotations. So uh, shout out to KB, Corey Barnett, 
our defensive side of the ball coach. So he did a great job making a game plan for us. All right, so Nevada gets the big win against Utah State, uh, two in a row, uh, and another uh, big one, two more big ones coming up here at home now. Uh, San Diego State on Friday and the New Mexico on Tuesday. We'll get Jared's thoughts on the upcoming game Friday night as the Aztecs come to Northern Nevada. We're going to break that one down coming up next. All right, we're back here inside our Champion Chevrolet NSN studio. We're rolling on with the Jared Lucas Show. This is episode number six. Uh, so coming off of that big win against Utah State, uh, now a huge opportunity uh, for a couple of big home wins. We'll start first on Friday, uh, an early tip off, 5 o'clock. So get out of work early, whatever you have to do, because this thing needs to be a sellout against San Diego State. The Aztecs are coming to town. They made it to the national championship last year. Uh, obviously, they've been one of the best teams in the Mountain West year in and year out. And a team Nevada was able to beat uh, at Lawler last year. And I think a big reason for that, th that was a hostile environment for the Aztecs yeah. last year. Yeah, I mean, once again, we go back to our student section. Our student section, I think, is one of the best in the Mountain West as well. But I remember la that game last year, uh, I mean, from the start, we had the, uh, I don't know if it's the fire extinguishers or the smoke, whatever you got, <laughs> as soon as we throw the ball up. So that's pretty cool. But once again... I know our student section isn't going to disappoint. I know the Reno community is uh, really looking forward to this game. So, All right, so the Aztecs this year, obviously a very different team uh, than last year, but uh, very talented again this year. Jaden Ledee, the big man uh, inside, is, has been kind of their star player, but they've got six, seven, eight guys. And this is a very deep basketball team, just like they were last season. Uh, down at Viejas Arena, you guys got off to a really slow start. You went into halftime. Uh, double-digit deficit, but we're able to, to claw back and eventually tie the game uh, during the second half. What, I guess, what was your biggest takeaway from that game? What did you learn the most uh, about that experience down at Viejas? Well, one, it isn't easy to win at Viejas, and then I know that personally for me, I, that was my worst defensive performance potentially of my career. I was looking at Phil wow. the other day with, with my coaches, and so it's something I'm going to take personally to defend at a higher level, but I also can go back to seven or eight minutes left in the game we were able to tie the game up. Uh, so our ability to kind of claw back into that game, we weren't able to kind of hang hang around with those guys. So we know that, uh, you know, we kind of owe them. Uh, they're a really good team, so it is going to be easy. So we got to do our best to uh, stay focused to the game plan. It's kind of a similar game plan as last game with Great Osborne. Uh, once again, a really good big and Jaden Ledee, who's another player who could be the Mountain West Player of the Year. When you look at this game against San Diego State, really any time you play San Diego State year in and year out, they're a very physical basketball team. They want to play a physical brand uh, of basketball, and they probably want to suck you into that as well. I guess how much do you have to go into with the mentality, kind of like you did against Utah State, especially on the defensive side, that you have to be able to defend as five, and you have to really play team defense, and you have to be able to maintain intensity, uh, I, I imagine, on that side of the floor, especially for a full 40 minutes when you're going to play San Diego State. Yeah, well, San Diego State is regarded as probably the best Mountain West defensive team year in and year out, and then you could probably say in the country, they are probably get that label as the best, one of the best defensive teams in the country. So we, we know we got to do our best, and Lamont Butler potentially, uh, I know this year he might have a shot to win Defensive Player of the Year, so we know that we got to do our best once we get in the lanes, be strong with the ball, and even in the post with Jaden Ledee, how physical he is, so we got to be strong. So we'll work on that in practice uh, the next couple of days, make sure we're ready to go against a really physical and strong team. We've also got a lot of depth, uh, and I think they're veteran like us as well. How important do you think is rebounding? going to be in this kind of a game because that was an area last time when you guys played against them that they had such a big advantage and how big is it and what do you need to do collectively as a team to be better in that rebounding category against them well Jaden Ledee is a force down there so we got to do our best to slow him down uh, anytime a shot goes up I think I don't think there's any other guy in this conference that you're more worried about when a shot goes up so we got to do our best to box him out and it's not just going to be one guy mm -hmm. it's not going to be Nick it's not just going to be KJ it's got to be multiple guys going down there to help the box out cause uh, and then I, I just think that when you look back at their whole team crashing the glass, they did a really good job last time against us, killing us on the glass. I think our coaches brought out a statistic. Uh, I think it was 53% of the shots that they put up, they got back. Mm. Uh, so that's that. a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of offensive boards that we gave up and then easy buckets. And then there's a point last game where they shot um, some free throws and back-to-back -back times they were able to get, some, get rebounds off mm. of free throws. And that's one thing that we kind of emphasize can't happen again. All right, so big opportunity. Friday night, 5 o'clock at Lawler Event Center. Uh, and then... Before I let you go and we get to the next segment with, uh, with Nick, I do want to talk to you about New Mexico coming in Tuesday as well. So right after that, I know your focus right now is on San Diego State, but in terms of the Lobos, what's kind of your mindset coming off of the game you guys played at the pit? Uh, they kicked our butt. 
Uh, plain and simple, uh, Jalen House, Jamal Mashburn, um, Donovan Dent all played a really good game. Uh, their whole team played a great game. Uh, so we owe them, but obviously first comes first, San Diego State, and uh, hopefully we can handle business against San Diego State. And then New Mexico, we feel like we've sw flipped a switch ever mm. since that game because it kind of uh, it woke us up. Yeah, and, ma and maybe this is kind of that revenge tour week now. It's like, okay, get, get San Diego State and New Mexico back, and you put yourself uh, in a really, really strong position uh, for the rest of the season. All right, uh, we're going to continue with the show down in the lounge. Uh, Nick Davidson's going to join us. Uh, we're going to talk about his recent strong play. And uh, we're going to go back to, there's a little bit of sound from Coach talking about Davidson deciding to redshirt his first season. Let me get both of you guys' thoughts on that when we come back. His redshirt year was our losing season, so I tell him all the time that, it helped you, Nick, but it killed us because uh, we should have played you. Uh, but uh, we always want to do things that are going to help the player. And he has gained 30 pounds since he's been here. He's stronger. He's more athletic. Uh, he's way more fluid. Um, he's learned the game at a high level. He's so well coached in high school. I talked to Coach McKnight uh, as early as this morning um, at Modern Day. And we just love Nick because uh, he, we knew he was well coached. Uh, and we knew what kind of kid we were getting. All right, we're back here at the Jared Lucas Show. That was head coach Steve Alford back in November. Uh, Nick Davidson joining us with Jared Lucas. So I imagine if you're Coach Alford, I know the way this season, that season played out. I think the, the team went like 13, 18. You weren't here yet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you think he regrets having you redshirt, or do you think it all kind of worked out? for the best all the way around? Or do you actually wish you would have played your freshman year? How do you, how do you like, uh, look back on that? I mean, I think it's worked out pretty well so far. We had a March Madness bid last year. Um, I mean, I got a two, another two more years after this. So just uh, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stuff that needed to be fixed that season, and I don't think I personally could have done you that. You don't think you were going to be that missing ingredient? Yeah, but I, I could have helped a little bit for sure. He's not wrong about that. Let's, let's talk about uh, just the way that you've been able to kind of catch on these last couple of games. I mean, what, <clears throat> not catch on, but you obviously have had some good games all year long, but the last two games in particular, back-to-back, double-doubles like that. Um, what has that done for your confidence, you know, just the way you've been able to shoot the ball and, and being, you know, this kind of go-to presence the last couple of games? Yeah, just uh, being aggressive. My teammates are doing a great job of finding me in spots where, you know, I'm comfortable scoring. Uh, obviously, like, the main premise of other people's scouting reports are, guard guys like Jared and Keenan. Mm -hmm. So to kind of, um, I mean, they're getting me the ball. So uh, I'm hoping that they can start guarding me a little bit, loosen them up a little bit, get other people going, just uh, help out all around. Jared, was there a moment like uh, when you first were around playing Nick and, and you're in practice where he even like surprised you and you're like, dang. Like, is there times on the floor when you're like, he just does things that you're just like, wow. Because to me, I watch Nick play sometimes. I'm like, you can just see that burst. You know, there's just, that ability, um, when was that moment for you? Uh, I think it's just been over time. I think for me, one thing that I've always noticed over my five years of college is the work ethic guys have. Mm -hmm. And I knew early on, as soon as I got here, because you know I'm somebody, and, and a lot of guys on our team are, are guys that get extra shots up, get extra work in, whatnot. And he was one of those guys, as soon as I got here, and I was like, oh, this, he's going to be good. Or he's going to have an opportunity to be really good if he continues to work as hard as he does. Um, and I think Nick's work ethic is, if not the best, is up there with some of the best players on our team with work ethic. But once again, I think it was just over time seeing his work ethic in the weight room on, and on the court. Do you, do you experience that sometimes when you play other teams where guys are surprised by you when you start knocking down threes and, and you blow past somebody? Maybe they see you on film and they're like, dang, does that happen to you sometimes? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, obviously, I don't look like I can like jump that high, to be honest <laughs> with you. But uh, um, being in the weight room with Coach Eck and, you know, continuously working on that. I mean, I couldn't even dunk off two feet when I first came here. It was wow. bad. Yeah, Coach Dwayne brought that up yesterday. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just uh, keep continuing to go to the weight room, working on my vert. It's something that, you know, you can work on. So Yeah. Um, is there somebody when you were growing up that you kind of were like, I want to be like this player? Was there somebody in the NBA that you watched their game or have you maybe modeled your game after? Uh I grew up um, like really liking Kevin Love, just like okay. the way he plays. Um, I think he's like very versatile, especially on the Timberwolves. Um, but yeah, I would say him and then uh, 
I don't know, KD is always fun to watch. You know, he's just a specimen, but I wouldn't really compare my game that much to him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about the, the backstory here, uh, Nick, because it's really cool. We'll start first. I want to show you a picture uh, that we, we got of you at a uh, Nevada football game. Uh, I'm, I don't know how old you must have been in this picture. Let's see if we can roll it up right now. I'm guessing like under 10 years old. How old do you think? What are you probably like nine, yeah, eight, nine years old? I think younger, like maybe like seven or eight. And this is your younger brother with yeah, you? Yeah, that's Zach. So Zach right now is in Montana. Yeah, he's redshirting too. He's redshirting in Montana. He's a redshirt freshman, or he's a freshman that's redshirting. And then you actually have another brother that's currently in high school. Is a junior? Yeah, junior uh, at Modern Day. And who's, who's the, I'm, I'm assuming you're the tallest because you're the oldest now. No, surprisingly, Blake, the youngest, is the Whoa. tallest. Yeah, I was uh, very caught off guard when I went back for Thanksgiving. He, <laughs> he passed me that year. He's, he's put, put a little uh, <laughs> little extra height. Just what has he been eating down there? I don't know, but he definitely needs to eat more. He looks really skinny. <laughs> <laughs> How cool would it be to have a chance to play with one or both of your brothers at some point? Uh, I mean, it would be awesome. Uh, you know, not to get personal, but I think I'd rather play with Blake a little bit more. Zach doesn't really pass the ball. <laughs> I experienced that we'll in keep, high school. We'll keep Zach up, in, up, up yeah, in Montana. He's good up there, but yeah. That's awesome. All right. Uh, and then, so we, we see the picture of you at a Wolfpack game because your parents uh, both went to Nevada. Your dad played basketball at Nevada. Your mom was a star volleyball player at Nevada. Uh, there's a picture of dad. He uh, shot like 65% from the floor, Nick. <laughs> I didn't know that. Did That's you, I was going to say sixty-five percent. Wow. Yeah. And your mom is the fourth all-time leader in aces as a Wolfpack volleyball player. So who do you think between the two in the family? Who's the better athlete, mom or dad? Um, that's tough. My dad could jump. I did know that, but my mom could not. So, which is surprising, her being an outside hitter. But so that makes me think maybe my mom more. <laughs> she didn't really have the athletic ability, but she had the skill to you know still get the job done. How crazy is that your dad went to Reed High School? Like, did, did, how much How much do you think about that sometimes? Just like how cool it is to be a Wolfpack legacy and... Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, when I first got here, I went to Rayleigh's, like right across the street, and I look over, I see Reed High School, and I was like, oh my God, that's where my dad went to high school. <laughs> Just getting groceries. I remember uh, I overheard you after a game the other day, and you were talking to Len Stevens, his grandson, yep. and you were like, hey, my dad actually played for your grandpa. Like, yep. I mean, I think just seeing some of those layers sometimes, oh. I actually didn't know that. I'm like, oh, wow, your dad played for Len Stevens. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty funny. And uh, um, Coach Stevens' grandson, he's, uh, he's always here in the summer. He's a Reno local. So I'll play pickup with him in the summer. I'd be like, oh, uh, your grandpa coached my dad. And then <laughs> Your dad was teammates with my dad in high school. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. no. That's an extra layer I didn't know about. Yeah. So it goes deep. It goes deep. All mm -hmm. right. So, uh, we're going to uh, take a break. But on the other side, we're going to play a little game here. Uh, how well these two know each other as teammates. We did this a few weeks ago with, with uh, Jared and Amir. Uh, and it was pretty fun. So we're going to do that as we wrap up the show. Coming up next. All right, Jared Lucas Show wraps up here, brought to you by Bradley Drendel and Janae. We're going to dive right into it. Okay, uh, this is a question about Nick. So if Nick was not a basketball player, what would he be? Oh, that's easy. Let's see the answers here. We might have just talked about this the other day. You want me to show it? Oh, yeah, I'll wait for you. Are we All talking right. about sports-wise or what? I think it can be anything. Oh, I thought we were talking about sports. I put sports. Okay. okay. You want to do sports? Yeah, sports. Stick with sports. All right, yeah. what, would, what would Nick be if he wasn't, wasn't playing basketball? I got one right here. Is it baseball? Correct. Baseball player? Pitcher. Who, who's your favorite team? Padres. Padres? Yeah. So I was wondering about that because you're from Orange County, uh -huh. right? So you could go either way. You could be Angels. You could be Padres. Angels, Angels Padres are like Dodgers, but I can't stand the Dodgers. you got to be a Dodgers fan, right? Oh, uh, yeah, Dodgers, Angels. I probably live... Right in the middle between okay. both. It's about 25 minutes each. You didn't like the – you kind of scowled a little bit with the podcast. Well, you know, because for Nick – well, he said he's from Orange County. I mean, he's the, got, he's the last – you know, like the last city in Orange County. But that's like 45 all, minutes from San Diego, right? He's, yeah. yeah, that's why he's a San Diego Padres fan. Uh -huh. I mean, you're not an Angels fan. All right. Um, let's go – let's ask, what, what is Jared's biggest pet peeve? Like, what annoys Jared the most? <laughs> <laughs> Nick had a pretty quick answer to this. All right, I wasn't sure if right. I was supposed to write All right, down. What, what, yeah. what annoys you the most? Uh, Nick, what do you think it is? <laughs> I, saw, I saw his answer, but I was going to say germs. Germs? Yeah. Is, is yeah. he a germaphobe? Germs. Is yeah. that how you put it? Yeah. 
Shaking hands, germs. You don't shake hands with people? No, I do. I do. But you, did you wash your hands, like, It was from my grandma. It, it was my grandma was always like that, <laughs> germs and all that. So, I've, I'm, yeah, I'm always like, I always wash my hands. All right, we have so, 15 yeah. seconds left. What's Jared's favorite food spot in Reno? Oh. Well, you got 15 seconds. You got to try and get it down. You got to get it done, bro. Right. You mean write it down? Yeah, you yeah. write it down. We're just going to see if it's right or not. Uh. Favorite food spot in Reno. We got five seconds left. What's it get? Silly Tolindo. Silly Tolindo. <laughs> That's, That's one of them. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. See you guys. <laughs>